Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So, I'm sure most of you by now have heard the excellent news that Donald Trump is planning to start his own social media platform. After big tech ever so opportunistically and gratuitously banned him from their platforms while he was still the sitting president, might I add, which is particularly problematic, there was much speculation as to what he would do next in the digital realm. He is, after all, the king of social media. It is against the natural order for him not to be on these platforms. I mean, his Twitter account was the most interesting thing on that whole decrepit website. So, forming his own platform seems like the next logical step for him. But will it actually happen is the million dollar question. Well, before I tell you, it's time for me to mention that this video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. You've all heard me rant about big tech censorship. Not only does big tech suppress, demonetize, or even ban some of your favorite online commentators, they profit while they do it by harvesting your data. I mean, think about how much of your life is on the internet nowadays, particularly since so many of us have spent more time at home and online thanks to COVID. Every website you visit, video you watch, or message you send gets tracked and data mined by big tech companies, and that data is sold to advertisers. Why allow big tech to profit from your information when you can deny them that profit by using an ExpressVPN? A VPN or virtual privacy network creates a secure tunnel between your device and the internet, masking your IP address and search patterns, thus maximizing your privacy. Think of it like using the bathroom. You wouldn't use the bathroom without shutting the door, so why would you use the internet without a VPN? And ExpressVPN is particularly good. It is super easy to use, it works on a number of devices, and I personally love it because it is fast. I have tried a lot of VPNs and the connection can be so slow and so sluggish that I just end up switching them off. With ExpressVPN, I don't have that problem. And for someone who really does need high-speed internet to make a living, that is a huge draw card for me. So stop handing your personal data to the big tech monopoly. Protect yourself with the VPN that I trust and I use to guard my info. And please don't just take my word for it. ExpressVPN really does come very well reviewed by people with much more tech experience than me. Find out how you can get three extra months for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash daisycousins. The link is in the video description and I would highly recommend you click on it and give ExpressVPN a go. So. As of a couple of weeks ago, it seems Donald Trump is actually going to do it. I do think that we're going to see President Trump returning to social media in probably about two or three months here with his own platform. And this is something that I think will be the, the hottest ticket in social media. It's going to completely redefine the game and everybody is going to be waiting and watching to see what exactly President uh, Trump does, but it will be his own platform. It will be big once he starts. There have been a lot of high power meetings he's been having at Mar-a-Lago uh, with some teams of folks who've been coming in. In. And I got to tell you, there have been, it's not just one company that's approached the president. There have been numerous companies, but I think the president does know what direction that he wants to head here. And this new platform is going to be big and everyone wants him. He's going to bring millions and millions, tens of millions of people to this new platform. <laughs> Since then, it has been revealed by Fox News that apparently the Trump team are in fact moving forward with their plans. Now, I'm sure you Trump fans out there are super duper excited and chomping at the bit to create a profile. Certainly, that is about 99% of what I feel. But there is a little part of me, that 1%, that's a bit hesitant. I mean, there are so many social media platforms already. Is it really in the best interest of humanity to have another one, even if it is pioneered by the one and only Donald J. Trump? See. I've been having a bit of an existential crisis lately about what society has turned into thanks to social media, particularly Twitter. And while there are a lot of great things about social media, I mean, I use it to make a full-time living for goodness sake, we all know how detrimental it is to mental health, especially for young people. It is very isolating, it polarizes people over every little issue, especially politics, it's full of which coupled with the isolation and mental health aspects is a surefire way to warp or destroy romantic relationships. And on top of that, as I mentioned earlier, a handful of big tech companies use it to track us, harvest our data, and make a profit, rendering us little more than lab rats with zero privacy. Like, I'm kind of at the point where I think another Luddite rebellion is in order, where everybody just destroys their smartphones and laptops, disconnects from the electric grid completely, and goes and lives in the woods with some company and some good books. 
Sometimes I, I quite seriously daydream about what a wonderful world it would be if that happened. But look, you may now be thinking, hang on a minute, Daisy, why are you being such a drama queen? I mean, surely it's not that bad. Well, it kind of is. And I think deep down, all you lovely people who get a lot of your information from social media, you know, YouTube channels like mine, etc., deep down have the same anxieties as me. And the biggest anxiety I have about it is that social media is insanely addictive, consciously so, which makes it very difficult to separate from reality a lot of the time. That really terrifies me. And the thing is, those of us who are pretty savvy in the first place to the perils of social media may think that we're able to avoid the traps. Trust me, we can't. Our brains are not equipped to compete with machines. I've always said that one day the droids will rise up and take over. My fellow leaguey wiggies, the time has come to overthrow humanity! <gasps> to overthrow humanity, we need a damned army. Then a damned army we shall have! Social media is deliberately designed to be addictive. This is because by keeping you hooked to your smartphones for hours and hours and hours a day, social media companies can ply you with advertisements based on your search history and interests and thus cash in on the ad revenue that generates. Trust me, I know, ad revenue is how I make my living on YouTube. It's a simple but powerful model and big tech has a very small conscious when it comes to getting eyeballs on those ads. As such, they use a number of design methods to grab and hold your attention for as long as possible. Ever notice that when you refresh your Facebook, Twitter or Instagram feeds on your smartphone, it looks kind of like a slot machine spinning? That's not an accident. Then there are features like infinite scroll, you know, where the more you flick your finger down the screen, the more is revealed in your feed without you having to actually click anything, and notifications, which could mean somebody has liked your post, thus indicating approval, and providing a small ping of self-worth that fades quickly until you get another ping from another notification, which therefore wreaks havoc with your dopamine levels. Then, of course, there is the gambling element, because, make no mistake, posting on social media is very like gambling particularly in a public forum like Twitter. You take a punt on a post, you throw it out there, you have maybe a vague idea of how it will be received, but you can never quite be sure, and then you risk either being punished or rewarded with thousands of likes and retweets and lovey-dovey comments, or the opposite of that, which is lots and lots of retweets, hardly any likes and masses of angry comments, or the third option, which is barely any reaction to the post at all. But whichever way your social media dice rolls, depending on that reaction, all three of those outcomes will make you want to roll again for different reasons. There is no disincentive. Even if people are hostile towards you, you still want to keep posting because you want to defend yourself or, or win the argument or whatever it is. Pretty soon, Three hours have gone by and you've missed the speeches and the cake at your cousin Nelly's wedding because you were busy doing a back and forth with some rando on Twitter and you have no idea where the time has gone. No concept at all. In fact, that hours have passed and now you are painfully aware of the disapproving looks that you are receiving from family and friends for completely ignoring those lovely speeches and of course how beautiful Nelly looked during her wedding dance. That loss of time is characteristic of gambling, and really any other kind of addiction. One of the big reasons people gamble or abuse substances is to escape time for a while. That's why casinos don't have windows or clocks or meal times, just endless rounds of drinks. Sir, would you mind taking your feet off the table and put your shoes on, please? Yeah, I would mind. I'm having a bad night. It's why opium dens used to block out windows. It was to prevent customers from seeing the passage of the day outside all of which puts users of any sort into a kind of timeless trance. Just like you at Cousin Nelly's wedding because of that Twitter troll, and boy did you feel anxious, frazzled, and guilty afterwards. You can see how all of this can hook you in unconsciously, especially because it's free, and particularly when everything is bright and shiny and colourful and makes noises and vibrates, etc, etc. It's not rocket science as to how this stuff is addictive. Due to the, to the effect that it has on the brain, social media is addictive both physically and psychologically. According to a study by Harvard University, self-disclosure on social media lights up the same part of the brain that ignites when when taking an addictive substance. The reward center in the brain and its chemical messenger pathways affect sensations and decisions. 
So when someone experiences something rewarding or uses an addictive substance, neurons in the principal dopamine producing areas of the brain are activated. This causes dopamine levels to rise. As such, the brain receives a reward and associates the drug or activity with positive reinforcement. And we can see this when people use social media. When you get a notification, the brain receives a rush of dopamine and sends it along reward pathways causing you to feel pleasure. Social media provides an endless supply of immediate rewards in the form of attention from others for minimal effort. Therefore, the brain actually rewires itself through this positive reinforcement, making people crave likes, retweets and emoji reactions. But look, okay, by now you might be asking, look, so what if people are paying a bit too much attention to social media? Are the outcomes really that bad? Well, yes. Study after study has shown links between increased social media usage and increased mental health issues, especially among young girls. While I can't get much into the nitty gritty because YouTube will not like it, according to the CDC, there has been a massive increase in rates of self-harm and taking of one's own life among girls aged 10 to 19 in the USA over the past decade, which coincides directly with the rise of social media. I have put some links in the video description if you would like to see the research. Even to a lesser extent, I mean, the effects are bad. If you are looking at a, a carefully edited highlights reel of other people's lives, as you do with Facebook and Instagram, or engaging in all-out virtual war with anonymous accounts on Twitter who say some of the worst things that I have ever seen, of course that is going to mess you up. And of course it's going to affect how you feel about yourself and how you interact with other people. You'll either feel terrible about yourself for apparently not being as successful as your friends, even though, remember, people do only post that carefully edited, filtered highlights reel. You'll get an eating disorder thanks to said fiddle to ring, be bullied and belittled into a state of paranoia and depression by constant trolling, or become less and less able to interact with people face to face because you are so used to interacting with them online. I shudder to think what the next generation of children is going to be like to talk to, considering they now come out of the womb practically attached to a smartphone. I'd imagine it would be something like this. Right. Then there's your increasingly shortening attention span, your messed up sleep patterns thanks to the light from your phone, which I know you use just before you go to sleep, which suppresses the release of melatonin, which is the hormone that makes us feel tired. Plus, think about this, how many people have lost their jobs thanks to semi-controversial social media posts from a number of years ago being unearthed? Do you really want that to be you? All in all, the whole thing is bad news, and I'm sure you can uh, see evidence of my social media existential crisis seeping through this video. Having said that, please keep watching my YouTube videos. I swear to God that I am only presenting to you the most accurate, wholesome takes on world issues that I can muster. I am a slave to the machine, okay? I am fully aware of that. But back to my original point. Considering everything that I have just mentioned, do you think it is a good idea for Donald Trump to introduce another social media platform? Is there a way for him to keep it vaguely ethical and avoid the problems that other platforms have? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.